Lesson 58. Collect Call. Mary is placing a collect call to her niece, Sally. Operator, may I help you? Hello, I'd like to make a collect call to New York. Station to station or person to person? Person to person. Okay, who are you calling? Sally Black. Her number is 718-555-4837. What's your name, please? Mary Smith. I'm her niece. All right, hold the line, please. The operator makes the call. I have a collect call for Sally Black from Mary Smith. Will you accept the charges? Yes, this is Sally Black. I'll accept the charges. Go ahead, please. Lesson 59. Seeing the doctor. Mary is at the doctor's office because she has a stomach ache. What seems to be the problem? I have a terrible stomach ache. How long have you been like this? Since Saturday night. Any other symptoms? Yes, I also feel dizzy. Can you think of anything you ate for dinner Saturday that might have caused it? Ah, uh, all I can think of is the fish we had. It didn't taste quite right. That might be it. Get this prescription filled at the pharmacy. Take one tablet right away, and you should be feeling better soon. Thank you, doctor. I also suggest that you follow a special diet. What's that? You should stick to eating lighter foods. Lesson 60. Drugstore. John is at the drugstore having a prescription filled. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to have this prescription filled. It'll take just a few minutes, sir. Is there anything else? Yes, I'd like some toothpaste. What brand? Colgate, please. The toothpaste is in that aisle there. Thanks so much. A few minutes later. Here's your prescription. Thank you. Be sure to follow the directions. Take one tablet three times a day. I understand. One tablet, three times a day. That's right. Bye now. Lesson 61. Opening an account. John is at the bank opening an account. Can I help you with something? Yes, I would like to open an account with your bank. Do you want a checking or a savings account? Actually, I want both. Please fill out these forms first. John fills out the forms. Here you are. May I see your ID, please? Here you are. Please sign on both signature cards. Do I have to make a minimum deposit in order to open an account? Yes. For a checking account, the minimum is $500. For a savings account, it depends on the type of account you wish to open. Lesson 62. Making a Withdrawal. Mary is at the bank making a withdrawal. I'd like to make a withdrawal. How much would you like? Could you first check the balance left in my checking account, please? I'll write it down for you. The clerk hands a slip to Mary. Ooh, okay. Hmm, in that case, I'll just take out $800. Please fill out this withdrawal slip. Mary fills out the slip. Here you are. May I see your ID, please? Oh, sure. How would you like your money? Could I have 500s, 250s, and the rest in 20s, please? Certainly. Here you are. Lesson 63. Post Office. Mary is at the post office mailing a letter to New York. I'd like to send this letter to New York. Airmail or surface mail? Do you happen to know the airmail rate to New York? I can easily look it up. It's 32 cents for the first ounce and 26 cents for each additional ounce. Huh, how long does it take for a letter to get there by airmail? Normally, it takes three or four days. Okay, airmail, please.
And I'd like to register it too, please. Would you like to insure it too? No, there's only a check and a photograph. What's the postage on it then? That'll be a dollar and eighty-three cents. Okay, here you are. And here's your receipt. Lesson sixty-four, barber shop. John is at the barber's getting a haircut. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'd like a haircut. Please have a seat here. How would you like it cut? Cut it short on the back with just a trim on top and a part to the left. Would you like a shampoo? Will it take long? Around thirty minutes. That'll be all right. Go ahead. After thirty minutes. How does it look, sir? Fine, but could you trim a little more off the sides? Sure, no problem. I'd like my hair to be just right. Sure, I understand. Lesson sixty-five, beauty salon. Mary is at the beauty salon getting a perm. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. I made an appointment for a perm at at four o'clock. Oh yes, please sit down. <laughs> Thank you. What kind of permanent would you like to have? What kinds do you have? Oh, we have quite a variety: regular, cold perm, straight perm, and foam. Ooh, today I'll try a foam perm. All right, please come and have a seat here. Could you please set the wave a little looser than usual? Not a problem, ma'am. What practical skill have you learned? Cooking is a practical skill that I have practiced recently. Who taught you that skill? My mom is the best cook. She taught me everything about how to make soup, salad, omelets, cake, etc. How did you learn it? She shows me how to buy food, prepare ingredients, and cook meals whenever she's in the kitchen. I learn how to boil, grill, steam, fry, braise, etc. day by day. Why did you learn it? I just want to be a good cook like my mom when I get married. I will prepare the best dishes for my husband and children. How long did it take for you to learn it? I learned it in four years. The skill seems to be strengthened when I live apart from my family for studying. How often do you use this skill? I cook every day. I also love homemade food. How has this skill helped you? It makes me more confident whenever I go on a picnic outside. I'm always responsible for the barbecue. Do people in your family know this skill too? My younger sister knows how to cook too. She has just started learning. Do all skills need learning? Yes, they do. Practice makes perfect. How is this skill important to you? It's an essential life skill. All women need to know this to keep their family warm and happy. What sport do you like? I like playing badminton. Is it easy to play that sport? Yes, it's pretty easy to play. Is that sport popular in your country? Yes, it is. How long have you been practicing that sport? I have been practicing it for five years. Who do you play sports with? I play badminton with my friends, sometimes with my brother. How often do you play that sport? I play badminton every weekend. What benefits can you get from that sport? It helps strengthen my muscles because while playing, I have to move continuously. It is good to burn calories as well. Do you like watching football online or offline? Yes, I do. I prefer watching football offline and online. Going to the stadium, shouting and cheering are good to release stress. What is your favorite football team? I like the Manchester United Football Club, also known as the Red Devils. Why is sport important? Sports are sources of recreation. People can learn how to encourage team spirit when they play sports too. What school did you go to? I went to Millennium High School, founded in 1999. Where is the school located? 
It's located in New York City, United States. Do you like the architecture of the school? Yes, I do. The architecture is not really impressive, but I like it that the building's architects left plenty of space for lounging. What are the teachers like? Most of the teachers there are helpful and friendly. I especially like Mr. Mike, my physics teacher. How long have you spent there? I have spent three years of upper secondary school there. Is that a single sex school? No, it isn't. This is a unisex school. Do you like the school uniform? We don't wear uniforms at school, actually. Why do you enjoy the time there? Although I had to deal with quite a heavy workload, I enjoy the relaxing atmosphere when hanging out with friends in the cafeteria there. What important lesson did you learn from school? I learned how to work in a group in which there are many friends coming from different cultures. That's the lesson of cooperation. Will you recommend that school to others? Yes, of course. I am proud to recommend Millennium High School to anyone who is searching for a good place to learn. How many popular festivals are there in your country? There are many. New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick Day, Easter, etc. What is the most important festival in your country? I believe that New Year's Day is the most important one since it's a chance for family reunion and parties. People gather together to welcome the new year. When does it take place? It occurs on January 1st. Where is the festival celebrated? The New Year's Day is celebrated all over the country. Each family has its own way to celebrate the day. What do people do to prepare for the festival? Before New Year's Day, people go shopping for food and drinks, repair the house, or put up decor. Who can join the festival? It's a day for everybody. What do people do in the festival? On New Year's Eve, people have a party with traditional food and drinks. After that, they may visit friends or relatives, go to the movies, or watch sports. What's special about that festival? It marks the end of a year and celebrates a new year. People believe that the things they do on the first day will bring good luck and prosperity to them during the whole year. Is the festival culturally related? Sure, the festival is an integral part of culture. Why is a festival important? It adds structure to our social lives and connects us with our families and backgrounds. Lesson 21 Accessories Lily is helping her younger sister, Rory, pick out jewelry. Look at this dress Mom got for me for the dance tonight! Wow, looks like Mom really splurged on you. But I need a pair of earrings to go with it! Don't worry about it. I'll lend you mine, and I've got some bracelets that'll match your new dress, too. Oh, but I was going to wear my charm bracelet! Yeah, if you want to look like a geek. Oh, what about Mom's pearl necklace? Or a pendant? I don't know. Pearls might be cool. Put them on and let's see. Oh, Lily! Everyone thinks the ankle chain you gave me for my birthday is hot. Thanks again. What are sisters for? Rory is dressed and ready to go. Oh, my little angel isn't so little anymore. You'll be breaking some hearts tonight. Lesson 22 Delivery Service Mary buys a skirt that needs to be altered and decides to have it delivered to her office. I really think this skirt is a little long. We could have alterations shorten it for you, ma'am. Oh, that would be nice. Please shorten it about an inch for me. Let me take your measurements. The salesperson takes Mary's measurements. How long will I need to wait? Hmm, about half an hour. Maybe you could do some other shopping while we are making the alterations. No, I have to run back home. Ah, <sighs> can I have this delivered to my office? Of course, ma'am. May I have the address and phone number, please? It's 36 North End Street. The phone is 555-2874, extension 512. 
And your name, please? Mary Smith. When can I expect the delivery? It'll go out with the first delivery tomorrow morning. You'll receive it before noon. Lesson 23. Tailored Suit John is at the tailor's ordering a suit. I'd like to have a suit made. Very good, sir. What material do you have in mind? I would prefer something soft and light. How's this? Yes, I'll take that. This material is of superior quality, I guarantee. I have no doubt. What's the price for making a suit and an extra pair of pants? $2,600. Good. And please be sure to take my measurements carefully. I will, sir. When will the suit be ready? In two weeks. I'll have it ready on Friday for your first fitting. Lesson 24. Suit Fitting John is at the tailor's for a fitting. Good morning. I've come for my suit fitting. Is it ready? Yes, here it is. Let me help you. It's a little too tight under the right arm. I'll let it out a bit. Don't worry. Don't you think the jacket is a little loose around the waist? It seems so. I'll take that in a little. When will the suit be ready? In two weeks. Why does it take so long? Normally, it takes three to four weeks. Don't you have express service? I'm leaving town next week. We do offer express service, but the charge for the workmanship is double. That's okay. I have to get this suit by early next week. Lesson 25. Laundry While Bob is doing the laundry, he is talking to his friend, John. Oh, my word! My clothes are all pink! It must be that new detergent. <laughs> Good job, Einstein. This isn't funny, John. My best white shirt is ruined. Bleach the shirt. It'll be okay. Next time, separate everything into dark, light, and white batches, you nut. That brand new Red Bull sweatsuit bled onto the other clothes. I can't afford spending more time and money washing my stuff. You'd rather buy new clothes every day. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks again for those dryer sheets. The static electricity disappeared like magic, huh? Yeah. My clothes used to stick together like Velcro. Don't wash that silk suit and tie in the washer. Yeah? Why not? Lesson 26. What to wear. As John is getting dressed for an important interview, his wife Mary is helping him pick out his clothes. I don't know what to wear today, dear. Hmm, why are you being so fussy about your clothes today? I'm going to have an important interview. Well, I'm sure you'll do well, dear. Thanks. Do you like this suit? Yes, you look very smart in that blue one. How about the tie? Do you think this will match? Mm, no, not really. Why don't you wear your new one? Which one? The one the kids gave you for your birthday. Oh, that one. I'll get it. John puts on the tie. How's that? It goes perfectly with your suit. How many rooms are there in your house? There are six rooms. A living room, two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a kitchen. Which floor is your bedroom on? My bedroom is on the first floor of a three-story house. Is it big or small? It's not very spacious, just enough to put necessary furniture in. What color is your bedroom painted? It's painted pink, my favorite color. Love your room? Why? I love it very much because it is my private space whenever I go home. What furniture does your bedroom contain? It contains a bed, a desk, and a clothing closet. What do you do in it? Well, I spend most of my free time there reading books and sleeping. 
How much time do you spend in your room? About 10 hours a day, especially in the evening. Share your room with anyone else? No, everyone in my family has their own room, so I stay there alone. What kind of presents are popular in your country? It depends on the receivers. For children, toys are the best choice. For youth, souvenirs are recommended. Who gave presents to you? On what occasions? I have received many presents, most of which were from my friends. They gave me gifts on my birthday. What was your last present? It was a handmade doll given by my best friend when I moved to another city. What was the one you liked best? I loved my book Nepal a lot. It was given to me on my 23rd birthday by my brother. Did you ever get a present you didn't like? Yes, I have, but I still treasure and take care of them. How do you thank people who give you presents? I gave them presents that they would like. What are the times of the year that people give presents in your country? Some special occasions are birthdays, weddings, graduation, New Year's Day, Valentine's Day, housewarming ceremonies, etc. Who was the last person you gave a present to? My mom. I bought her a coat on a business trip to Bangkok. Is giving presents important in daily life? Yes, it is. It's one of the best ways to show your love and gratitude to someone. Which tourist attractions do you prefer when traveling? Historical places or natural landmarks? Well, historical places are always my first choice when traveling. What do you usually do when visiting historical places? I usually listen to the tour guide introducing the sites and take notes about important historical events. Can you name some historical places you have visited? Whenever I travel to a foreign country, I always visit its famous historical places. Some of them are the pyramids in Egypt, Angkor Wat in Cambodia, Stonehenge in England, and the Taj Mahal in India. What's your most favorite historical place? Why? I love the pyramids the most. Taking a tour around the pyramids, I can not only enjoy the gorgeous architecture, but also learn cultural and historical values of the ancient Egyptian culture. What is the most famous historical place in your country? It's definitely the Statue of Liberty in New York City. What's special about it? The statue was gifted by the people of France. It is a symbol of freedom for the U.S. as well as a welcoming sight to people coming to the U.S. from another country. Where is it located? It's located on Liberty Island in New York Harbor, NYC. Should the youth visit historical places instead of other places? Sure. Nowadays, the youth should visit these kind of places more often in order to preserve historical and cultural values of their country. What are the benefits of reading a newspaper or magazine? Newspapers, magazines, can broaden your mind about thousands of things without the need to travel. How often do you read it? I read it every day. What's the best time to read the newspaper? I think the best time is in the morning when you start a new day. What types of magazines do you usually read? I usually read politics and fashion magazines. I also enjoy reading about culture and tourism. What's your favorite magazine? My favorite is the New York Times, which writes about all sorts of things. Business, sports, movies, travel, books, jobs, education, and real estate. Do you read the paper or online news? I prefer online news to save money. How much does it cost you to buy paper newspaper per month? I only buy a monthly newspaper, so it doesn't cost much money, around $5 a month. What is the most popular magazine in your country? I think it would be Forbes magazine, a leading source for reliable business news and financial information. With the popularity of Internet, do you think newspapers and magazines will disappear? Yes, unfortunately, it's just a matter of time. How many events have you joined this year? What were they about? I have joined more than 10 events so far, most of which were about education. What was your most memorable event? The most memorable for me was an international study conference in which I was introduced to some famous universities in Europe to study overseas. Was it organized indoors or outdoors? It was an indoor event.
Who sponsored the event? The event organizer was the Education Department of American Center, but the universities introduced in the conference were the ones who paid. Who went to the event with you? I went there with my friends, who shared the same interest in studying abroad as me. What were some performances in the event? There were not many performances. Each university representative just had a speech to introduce their school to students and then they hosted Q&A session. Was the event shown on TV? The event was not aired, but there were television advertisements for it. How would someone market an event? Taking advantage of social media is a smart way to promote an event. What subjects did you learn in school? I learned math, science, physics, biology, geography, history, literature, English, art, and music. What subject did you like the most when you were at school? Were you good at it? I liked biology the most, although I was excellent at literature. Did your friends like that subject too? Yes, they did. They enjoyed every single biology lesson. Was the textbook written in English or any other language? It was written in English. Who taught that subject? My teacher was Miss Karen from the USA. How was the subject helpful to you? It helped me a lot in becoming a biology teacher. How often did you learn that subject? I often had biology lessons five times a week. How long did you spend on that subject at home? I spent roughly two hours per day studying biology at home. Have you ever attended any extra classes for that subject? Yes, I have. I usually attended evening classes. Is it important to study hard on both social sciences and natural sciences? No, it isn't. Students should study the ones they like and the ones that are helpful to their career path. What type of museum is popular in your country? There are many types of museums, but the most popular are historical museums. What is the most famous museum in your country? That would be the British Museum, located in London. What's special about it? I'm impressed by its large amount of historical, art, and cultural work. How many times have you visited that museum? I have visited the museum twice. What do you usually do when visiting a museum? I usually listen to the tour guide and take notes about important information. Are you allowed to take pictures there? No, the guards did not allow us to bring the camera in. How did you feel after visiting there? The overall experience was fantastic, and I learned so many things in just a few hours. What do you think is the importance of museums in history? Museums are an integral part of any country's history, and they keep history alive. Lesson 42 Boarding. John and his wife Mary are boarding their flight. Good morning. Welcome aboard. This way, please. Thank you, miss. Will you direct us to our seats, please? Certainly. May I see your boarding passes, please? Sure. Here they are. Thank you. Your seats are in the middle of the cabin. Follow me, please. The flight attendant leads John and Mary to their seats. Here you are. Thank you, miss. How long is the flight? It's about five hours. Can you tell me what time we'll arrive? Sure. Let me see. Mm, 7.25 p.m. Is that Paris time? Yes. 7.25 in the evening. Lesson 43 Customs. John is going through customs. May I see your passport, please? Yes, here it is. Do you have anything to declare? No, I don't. Do you have any cigarettes or liquor? Yes, I have one carton of cigarettes and a bottle of whiskey. Don't you have any gifts or valuable articles? I have two cameras. Uh-huh. What's their value? One is worth about $400, and the other about $500. Are they gifts? Well, this one is a gift, and the other one is for my own use. I see. Thank you. Good day. Lesson 44, Taxi. 
John hails a taxi to go to the train station. Hey, taxi! Where to, sir? Can you get me to the railway station quick? Hop in. Could you put my luggage in the trunk, please? Sure. In the taxi. Driver, can you drive faster? I'm afraid I might miss my train. I'm sorry. There's just too much traffic. I think I'm going to miss the train. When did your train leave? In about half an hour. Don't worry. We can take a road where there's no traffic. Great. Lesson 45 Traffic Jam. While John is on his way to the train station, his taxi gets stuck in a traffic jam. Oh, we're stuck in a traffic jam! The traffic's always heavy at this time of day. This is just great. Is there any way we can get out of here? I'm afraid there's nothing we can do but wait. Oh, it's hopeless. I'm sure I'll miss my train. Wait a minute. We can turn at the next intersection. I know another road we can take. Terrific. Is the traffic lighter there? Yeah, it's a quiet road. But we'll go through a toll booth. That'll cost you a little extra. So it's a shortcut? Yeah. It really doesn't matter, as long as I can catch the train. At the railway station. Here you are, sir. you still got seven minutes to spare. Seventeen fifty, please. John is paying the taxi driver. Thank you. Keep the change. Lesson 46. Train. John is at the train station ticket counter buying a ticket to New York. When is the next train to New York? The next train leaves at 7.55. That's about two hours from now. There isn't anything before then? There's a local train that leaves at 7.03, but that gets into New York later than the 7.55. What time is the 7.55 due in New York? That train gets there at 9 o'clock on the button. Well, I guess I'll have to wait. Let me have a ticket for the 7.55, please. One way or round trip? One way. First class, please. Here you are. Which platform will my train be at? Platform 4. Just follow the blue arrows. Lesson 47. Bus. John is asking a passerby how to get to the Metropolitan Museum of Art by bus. Does this bus go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art? The Met? No, it doesn't. Which bus will take me there? You need to take the number 10. Where can I catch it? Right here at this stop. Do you happen to know how often a number 10 comes by? About every 10 or 15 minutes. Most of the buses I've seen have been pretty crowded. How about the number 10? Yes, I'm afraid it will be too. It's rush hour now. Thank you anyway. Lesson 48. Asking for directions. John is lost in a strange city and asks a police officer for directions back to his hotel. Excuse me, officer. I'm a stranger here and I'm lost. Where do you want to go? I want to get back to my hotel, the Hilton Hotel. Well, your trouble is that you're walking in the opposite direction of the hotel. Oh, no wonder. Could you please point me in the right direction? With pleasure. Walk down this road, take the first left. Then walk four blocks and you'll find the hotel. About how long will it take me to walk there? Uh, about half an hour. Is there a bus I can take to get there? Actually, you can take the subway and get off at 60th Street. Where can I get the subway? Just across the street. See? Yes, I see it. Thank you. Who wrote the letter to you? My dad wrote the letter to me when he was on a business trip. Did you keep the letter? 
Yes, put it in a folder. Whenever I'm down, reading his letter would be a good way to cheer me up. What was the letter about? He told me about his new workplace and how things were there. How did you feel about the letter? I was glad to know that he was fine in another city. Do you have a letter collection? Yes, I collected all the letters from family and friends. It's one of my hobbies. Do you like writing letters or emails? I prefer writing paper letters. Do people in your country usually write letters? Years ago, they did. Now people prefer emails. What's the difference between emails and handwritten letters? Emails are much more convenient than letters because they're free to send and they get there instantly. However, letters are much more special. Why should we write letters to friends or relatives? It's a good way to show love to people you care about. What is your hobby? I like playing sports, especially swimming. Is your hobby common in your country? Yes, kids, adults, and senior citizens all like swimming in my country. Is your hobby the same as when you were a child? Yes, I was fond of swimming when I was a little girl. When did you start practicing that hobby? I started swimming when I was five years old. Is there anybody in your family who you share your hobby with? My dad, he taught me how to swim. How much time do you spend on your hobby? I usually go to the swimming pool twice a week. What benefits do you get from it? Swimming is a really good workout. It helps me keep fit and chill out after a long day working. Have you ever heard of someone having a very unusual hobby? Yes, my cousin loves tattooing vehicles. He puts stickers everywhere on his car. What do you think about someone having weird hobbies? I don't think any hobby is weird. It's just what you like to do, so I don't judge others. What hobbies are usually expensive in your country? Playing golf is a really expensive hobby. Only the rich can afford to buy golf supplies. What kind of music do you like? I'm crazy about pop music. Is that the kind of music preferred in your country? It varies. Normally, the youth enjoy rock and pop, while middle aged citizens prefer country music. Who is your favorite singer? I'm a big fan of Miley Cyrus, a talented U.S. singer, songwriter, and actress. What piece of music do you like? Who sang that song? My favorite song is Jolene, sung by Miley Cyrus. How much time a day do you spend listening to music? I usually listen to music all day with an MP3 player. Do you feel relaxed listening to music? Sure. I feel like there are no more worries in the world. Why is music important to us? Music has the power of beautifying our life. Do you usually go to bars or clubs? Not often. I sometimes go there on weekends. What do you think about the teenagers' music style? Teenagers tend to choose loud and fast music, like rock or rap. Everyone has their own taste of music, though. Have you ever thought of forming a music band? No, I don't have any talent for music. Do you like shopping? Yes, I'm a shopaholic. What do you usually shop for? I usually shop for clothes. I'm a big fashion fan. Where do you go shopping? At some fashion boutiques in my neighborhood. Are there many shops in your neighborhood? Yes, my area is the city center, so I have many choices of where to shop. Do you spend much money on shopping? Yes, and I'm usually broke at the end of the month. Do you usually shop online? What items? Yes, but not really often. I only buy furniture online. What's the difference between shopping online and offline? Unlike shopping offline, you cannot try on the pieces of clothes or check the material when shopping online. Where did you go for holiday? Last year, I went to Singapore, a Southeast Asian country. Why did you choose that destination? I love to travel to Asian countries, and Singapore was my best choice because of its beauty and culture. How long did it last? I stayed there for two weeks. Who went with you? I traveled to Singapore with my best friends. How did you travel? We flew there, of course.
During the time there, we moved mostly by MRT and taxi. What did you pack up? I only brought some necessary items, such as money, clothes, medicine, a map, and a digital camera. What did you do during the holiday? We visited famous tourist attractions like Marina Bay Sands, Merlion Park, Art Science Museum, Singapore Flyers. We also enjoyed local cuisine there. What's the difference between holidays today and 20 years ago? Well, it has changed a lot. People now can afford holidays outside their countries, while 20 years ago, traveling abroad seemed hard. At what time do people in your country usually go on holiday? It depends on what job people have. When they have a break from work, they will find somewhere to travel. Are you an animal lover? Yes, I am. I love animals. Are you raising any pets? Yes, I have a pit bull puppy at home. What is it like? My puppy is friendly, highly intelligent, and well behaved. He always waves his tail and licks my hand to welcome me home. What does it look like? He's a medium sized puppy with a strong neck, broad chest, and brown hair. What are its habits? My pit bull puppy loves doing exercise every day. When he plays, he plays to win. What do you usually do with it? We usually play tennis together. My puppy helps me pick up tennis balls. What does it like to eat? He loves beef, chicken, and some dairy products. What do you learn from it? He teaches me loyalty. An adult pit bull may make me feel safe. Why do people keep pets? They consider pets as their loyal companions, which make their life better. Are pets well looked after in your country? Yes, people in my country love pets. Lesson 27 Real Estate Agency John is talking to Jim, a real estate agent, about an apartment. We're looking for a three bedroom apartment. Hmm, I think I have just what you're looking for. Oh, good. Where is it? On Forest Avenue. Forest Avenue. Is that downtown? Yes, it is. What kind of neighborhood is it? I think you like the neighborhood. It's very safe. That sounds good. How much is the rent? It's very reasonable. It's $1,500 a month. Does that include utilities? Everything except the gas. Lesson 28. Renting an apartment. Jim, a real estate agent, is showing Mary and her husband John an apartment. Can we see the kitchen? Sure, this way, please. Oh, the kitchen is so spacious. Yes, I knew you'd love it. Is this refrigerator new? Yes, it's brand new. Hmm, another question. Are dogs allowed in this building? Dogs? I think dogs are allowed. When can we move in? Anytime. If it's all right with you, we want to move in tomorrow. No problem. I need two months' rent in advance plus an $800 security deposit that you'll get back when you move out. Lesson 29 Interior Design John and his wife Mary. Are talking about remodeling their new apartment. John, I already have the perfect color scheme and design in mind. Sounds wonderful, dear. I have a few ideas myself. I want white marble in the entranceway with a tall glass chandelier. I want to punch out that pantry wall and put up cabinets to display your china. But that'll make the kitchen area so huge. Right. We can put an island in the middle of the floor with a grill barbecue in the works. Great idea. We've just got to figure out what's going to come first. The entranceway is going to be everyone's first impression of our home. So drop your ideas and we'll go over them with the contractor. Lesson 30 Buying Furniture. John is talking to a furniture store clerk about buying a new living room set. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I want to buy a living room set. Come over here, please. We have a very wide selection. What's this table made of? 
This one? No, uh, the one over there. It's maple. Oh, I like this sofa. It's as comfortable as a bed. Well, it is a bed. I mean, it can be converted into one. How convenient. I'll take it. Do you have an installment plan? Yes. You can pay it in 12 easy monthly installments. Lesson 31. Arranging Furniture. Mary and her husband John are arranging their new living room furniture. John, can you do me a favor? Of course. What can I do for you? Help me move the table. It's too heavy for me. Why? The table is a bit in the way. Where do you want it then? Next to the window. In that case, you'll have to move the sofa to make room for the table. You're right. But where should we put this sofa? We can put it in a small bedroom. But the cabinet will block the entrance. We'd have to move it too. Can we move it by ourselves? Uh, I doubt it. Lesson 32. Colleagues visit. While John is showing his colleague Tony around his new place, Tony compliments the decor. You have a lovely home, John. I hope you'll show me around inside sometime. There is no time like the present. Please, come right in. I'll be happy to show you around. That's very kind of you. I hope I'm not putting you into a lot of trouble. No trouble at all. Now, here's the living room. It's quite spacious, isn't it? And very sunny, too. Yes, the room faces south, so we have sunshine all day long. It's beautifully furnished. I'm glad you like it. Who is your designer and where did you ever get this furniture? We hired Shields and Ross to do the design, but most of the furnishings had to be made to order. No wonder it is so nice. Lesson 33. House Repairs John calls a plumber to repair a leak in the kitchen sink. Bob's plumbing and heating! Hello, could you tell me if you fix kitchen sinks? Yes, we do. What's the problem? Water is leaking all over my kitchen floor. Well, we can send over one of our plumbers at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Will someone be at home then? At 4 o'clock this afternoon, I'll be here. Okay, what's the name? John Smith. And the address? Number 2236 Hemlock Street. All right, Mr. Smith. We'll have a plumber there at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Thanks very much. Lesson 34. Hotel Reservations. John is making reservations for a hotel room over the phone. Hilton Hotel, may I help you? Yes, I'd like to make a reservation for tomorrow. What kind of room would you like? A double, please. And how long do you plan to stay, sir? Three days. What's the price of the room? That'll be $119 a night. Are any meals included? Yes, we have a complimentary breakfast buffet on the mezzanine. That's fine. May I have your name, please? Yes, John Smith. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We'll be expecting you. How many people are there in your family? There are five people in my family. My father, mother, brother, sister, and me. Does your family live in a house or an apartment? We live in a house in the countryside. What does your father do? My father is a doctor. He works at the local hospital. How old is your mother? She is 40 years old, one year younger than my father. Do you have any siblings? What's his or her name? Yes, I do. I have one elder brother, David, and one younger sister, Mary. Are you the oldest among your brothers and sisters? No, I'm not. I'm the second child in my family. What is your mother-father like? 
My father likes playing football, and my mother likes cooking. Do your parents let you stay out late? Of course not. They always ask me to get home before 10 p.m. each night. Do you stay with your parents? Right now, no, but I used to. Does your family usually have dinner together? Yes, we do. My mom always prepares delicious meals for us. How often do you eat out? Who do you go with? I often eat out on weekends when I hang out with my friends. What restaurant do you usually visit? Well, there are not many restaurants in my neighborhood, so my best choice is the deli and convenience stores like the Circle K, Mini Stop, B Smart. What type of food do you enjoy to eat? Western or Asian? I'm interested in Asian food. Western food is not my thing. How much do you usually pay when you eat out? It's not very expensive, just around $5 for each meal. Do you enjoy spicy food? Yes, I do, especially on cold days. Are the servers there friendly to you? Yes, they are. Most of them are really helpful. Have you ever tried Italian food? Yes, at least once, when I was in my friend's wedding party. Are you concerned about calories when eating out? Yes, I am. I'm on diet now, so this really matters to me. Are fast food restaurants like KFC or McDonald's famous in your country? Yes, they are. The youth in my country are big fans of fast food. Do you often drink alcohol when eating out? No, not often. Just when I have parties with my friends. How often do you read books? I read books almost every night before I go to bed. What's your favorite type of book? I love reading about different cultures. What can you learn from books? Books can broaden my horizon about thousands of things around the world, and books are also my best friends. Where do you read books? I read books at home, sometimes in the library. What's the most interesting book you've ever read? I think that would be Nepal, a book written about the country of Nepal, published in 1999. How long does it take you to finish a book? Well, it depends on the length of the book, but it usually takes me a week to finish a 300 page book. Do you usually bring books with you when you travel? Yes, I do. When I'm at the airport or bus station, I read books to kill time. Is there any bookstore or library in your area? Unfortunately, there are none near my house. The nearest one is three kilometers away. How many places have you traveled to? I visited all the provinces throughout my country. Who do you usually go with? I often go with my family, sometimes with my best friends. What's your favorite tourist attraction? That would be Venice City in Italy. I love riding the gondola along the canals while watching Italian people live their daily lives. Have you ever been abroad? Yes, I have. I came to Italy last year for a business trip. What language do you use when traveling? English, but sometimes I have to use body language since not all people are good at English. What do you usually do during your trip? I often go sightseeing, take pictures, mingle with the local people, and sample the local cuisine. What do you do to prepare for your trip? Before the trip, I search for information about the location, weather, famous tourist attractions, transportation, local cuisine, and prices on the internet. What do you usually bring when you travel? I usually pack my suitcase with some necessary items, such as clothes, medicine, food, a map, and a camera. Do you prefer traveling by car, train, or plane? I prefer planes, although it can be a little expensive. Planes are much faster than any other mode of transport. Do you prefer traveling alone or joining a guided tour? I love backpacking with my friends who share the same interests as me. What type of websites do you often search for? It varies depending on my goal. I prefer entertainment and education websites such as Facebook.com, Wikipedia.org, and VOA Special English. How long have you been using them? I have been using these websites since I was a freshman at university. What do you visit those websites for? 
I use them to study online or relax after working. What's your favorite website? I think it's probably youtube.com. Can you read websites in English? Yes, I can. Most useful websites are written in English. What's the most popular website in your country? I'm not quite sure, but I guess it would be facebook.com. Do you think the youth should use websites as a reliable source of knowledge? Not always. They should choose their sources carefully. Have you ever been in a traffic accident? Yes, three years ago. What happened? I was hit by a car while crossing the road. How did you feel then? I felt really terrible because of my injuries. Who was involved in the accident? The car driver, his family inside the car, and me. Did the insurance company pay for repair service? I was walking, so I did not require any car repair services. Did you need a lawyer? I hurt my lower back just a little, so I didn't call a lawyer. Did you report the issue to the police? No, we didn't want to get the police involved. Sent to the hospital after the accident? No, the injury wasn't really serious. Do you have a driving license? Yes, I do. I always keep it in my purse. Why should people obey traffic regulations? To protect themselves and others. The best way are to wear a helmet, wait for traffic lights, and stay in the appropriate vehicle pedestrian lanes. Did you have a happy childhood? Yes, I did. I enjoyed playing hide and seek with my peers. Did you experience your childhood in a city or countryside? I spent my childhood in a rural area where I could see vast rice fields. Did you usually skip class when you were a child? Yes, I did, and many of my friends did too. Who were you with when you were a child? I was with my beloved family. What did you want to be when you were a child? I dreamed of being a fashion designer. Who did you love the most when you were a child? I loved my mom the most, since she was always there and took care of me. Who was your childhood hero? Robin Hood. He took money from the rich and gave it to the poor. What reminds you of your childhood? Green rice fields, which I happen to see everywhere, remind me of my beautiful childhood. Did you change a lot when you grew up? Yes, of course. I'm more mature now, both physically and mentally. Why is childhood important? Because it shapes people into who they will become. Lesson 11 Pub. John and his friend Bob are chatting over drinks at a bar. What can I get you to drink? I'll have a whiskey with soda water. Whiskey is too strong for me. I'll have a light beer. You're not a big drinker, are you? No, I can only take weak drinks. Their whiskey isn't bad. Why don't you have a glass? Okay, I'll have a little. Let me pour you a glass. Say when. Thanks. That's enough. Are you sure you don't want a little more? I'm sure. Thanks. Lesson 12. Recipe. While Bill is having dinner at John and Mary's house, he compliments Mary's cooking and asks her for the recipe. Mmm, this is delicious. Oh, do you really like it? Yes, it's superb. Well, it's kind of you to say so. In fact, could I ask you for the recipe? Sure. It's really very easy. First, mix together an egg, two teaspoons of salt, and two pounds of ground beef. Then add two ounces of milk. Are you with me? Yes, I've got it. Okay. Next, put the mixture into a baking pan and bake it 45 minutes at 360 degrees. Wait a minute. I didn't catch you there. Could you repeat that? Sure. Bake it 45 minutes at 360. Now I've got it. Thank you. Lesson 13. Supermarket. John is shopping at the supermarket, but he can't find anything, so he asks a clerk for help. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I'm at a complete loss. I'm looking for the sugar. Sugar? It's in the food section on aisle B. 
I'm sorry. Did you say aisle D? I said B. Oh, I see. Thanks very much. My pleasure. One more thing. Could you tell me where the household supplies are? You bet. Go down this aisle and turn left. Thanks. You've been very helpful. Lesson 14. Paying. While John is at the supermarket checkout counter, having his purchase rung up, the cashier makes a mistake and John corrects her. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How much do I owe you? That comes to $4.64. 464? Are you sure that's right? That seems a little too high to me. Well, let's see. The milk was one eighty nine. The potatoes are ninety nine cents. Wait a minute. I don't think you're right there. The potatoes should be eighty cents. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Never mind. Now it comes to a total of four dollars and forty five cents. Here's a twenty. All right. Your change is fifteen dollars and fifty five cents. Here you are. Thank you. Have a nice day. Lesson 15. My Treat. Bob asks his colleague John out for lunch to repay him for his help. Good afternoon, Bob. How was your morning? Busy as usual. How about yours? Just routine. Nothing very special. Did you have lunch yet? Not yet. Would you care to join me? Sure. Let me treat you lunch. Oh, that's nice of you. But why do I deserve that? I want to thank you for helping me paint my house the other day. I owe you. That isn't necessary at all. Let's go Dutch. No, I really want to. Well, if you put it that way, okay. Good. Let's go. Lesson 16. Diet. Mary asks her daughter Lily why she is eating so little, and Lily tells her that she is on a diet. Lily! You're eating like a bird. I just can't eat anymore. Is anything wrong with you? No, Mom. I'm all right. I'm on a diet. On a diet? Don't be silly. You're slim enough. I'm putting on weight. Would you like a piece of meat pie? It's your favorite. No, thanks. Come on now. You've hardly eaten anything. Well, maybe I can manage a very small piece. Please do. Lesson 17. Buying a Sweater While Mary and her friend Rose are shopping, Mary sees two sweaters, but she can't decide which to buy. Which one do you think is better? Well, the quality of the wool one is very good. But it's too expensive. Yes, the acrylic one is cheaper, but I think wool feels better. That's true. The wool one feels warm and soft. It's made of the best wool from New Zealand. Oh, but I like the color of the other one. It's much brighter. That's true. It's more fashionable, isn't it? Oh, dear. I'm getting more and more confused. So which one will you take? It's a hard choice. Oh, I'll just have to leave it for the moment. Lesson 18. The Price While John is shopping for a sweater for his wife, a clerk is giving him suggestions. Can you show me some sweaters, please? Certainly, sir. We have a large variety over here. I'm sorry. I want ladies' sweaters, not men's. I see. The women's are this way. Would you like a v-neck or a turtleneck? A turtleneck. Do you like any of these? That one there is very nice. How much is it? It's 169 That's more than I want to spend. Do you have anything less expensive? Certainly, sir. What price range do you have in mind? I'd like to stay under $100. In that case, I strongly recommend this one. It's just $5 over your limit and is worth every penny of it. Okay, I'll take it. Lesson 19. Trying on clothes. 
While Mary is shopping for a dress, a saleswoman is helping her pick one out. Good morning, ma'am. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, I'd like to see one of those dresses. You mean this one? Yes. What is this dress made of? It's silk. Pretty, isn't it? May I try this one on? Certainly. What size do you wear? Six. Here you are. The dressing rooms are over there. A few minutes later, Mary comes back from the dressing room. How does it fit? Perfectly. I'll take it. Lesson 20 Stuck Zipper John is helping his wife Mary to zip up her dress. Oh, can you do me a favor, honey? What seems to be the trouble? Oh, my zipper's stuck. Let me take a look. It looks as if your blouse is caught in a zipper. Oh, can you get it out without tearing the blouse? I think so, dear. Well, be careful. We'll just have to be patient and work it out little by little. This is a new blouse. Don't worry. If I go slowly, it should come loose without causing any damage. I hope you can get it. There! I've got it out. Oh, you did it! Oh, thank you so much, honey. Do you usually watch movies at home or at a movie theater? I usually watch movies on my laptop. Sometimes I go to the movie theater. Is watching movies at the theater more interesting than watching movies at home? Yes, definitely, because you can watch vivid images on a large screen with lively sound effects. How often do you go to the movie theater? I often go to the movie theater every weekend. What's your favorite type of movie? What movie of that type do you like? My favorite type is comedy because whenever I watch one, I feel like there are no more worries in the world. I love the Mr. Bean movie series. Was that movie adapted from a book? No, the story is derived from funny situations in real life. Who are the actors or actresses in the movie? Mr. Bean is the main character. He is played by Rowan Atkinson, who is from England. Was it recommended by your friend, teacher, or family? It was recommended by my classmate. Was the movie in your mother language or in English? It was in English, but I can also watch it with subtitles. Should children watch violent movies? I don't believe so. Young children are very impressionable, and it could lead them to wanting to imitate the behavior. What's the most important factor of a great movie? I believe that plot and actors are among the factors which decide the success of a movie. Have you ever traveled abroad? If yes, what country was it? Yes, I have. I traveled to the USA last year with my family. Where is that country located? The USA is located in North America. What is it famous for? The USA is known for its cultural achievements and landmarks. What are the special food and drinks of that country? There are many. They are known for fast food, dairy, and many beverages. What do you like about that country? I like the fast pace of life and the various subcultures. How many citizens are there in that country? The current population of the United States of America was over 324 million in 2016, which accounts for 4.3% of the total world population. What language do people there speak? The national language is English, but many people also speak Spanish, French, German, and Chinese. Do you want to go back there again? Sure. Why do people like to travel abroad? They just want to discover new places, learn new cultures, and maybe speak new languages. On what occasions do people in your country celebrate parties? There are many occasions when people throw parties, such as New Year's Eve, wedding engagements, family reunions, birthdays, etc. But sometimes people hold parties just when they meet up and want to have something fun to do. Are you a party animal? Yes, I am. I am crazy about going to parties. I love meeting friends, drinking, and talking. When do parties often start and finish? It depends on what kind of party it is. 
I believe the perfect time to have a party is in the evening, from 8 to 11 p.m. Where are the parties thrown? They are held inside or outside. Some formal events, like weddings, housewarmings, are organized inside, while others, like family reunions and birthdays, may be held outside. What do you usually wear when you come to a party? I often wear casual clothes, like a t-shirt and jeans if I go to informal parties, and a dress for formal ones. What do people do in the parties you attended? At the party, people talk, eat, and drink together. Some go there to find business opportunities and new partners. Do you enjoy drinking alcohol at the parties? Yes, a little beer can cheer me up. Do people have to bring anything to the party? It's not required, but sometimes visitors bring some gifts to show their love for the host. Why do people, especially the youth, love going to parties? It's just a good way for them to chill out after a long day. Who is your favorite teacher? I like Mr. Tom the most. He is my English teacher. Is he a foreign teacher? Yes, he's from the U.S. What do you like about his lessons? I have fallen in love with his American accent, and he always shows us something new about the world outside of textbooks. What's he like? He's not only knowledgeable, but also very friendly. He always treats us like friends, not students. What does he usually wear when coming to class? He usually wears a gray suit when he comes to class. Do you love his subject? Yes, I enjoy English a lot. Do students in your class like him? Yes, all of us admire him. Do you want to be a teacher like him? No, although I am like him. My dream is not to become a teacher. I would like to be a chef. Have you ever been punished by him? No, he rarely punishes anyone. Do you want to see him again? Of course, he's a great mentor. Who's your best friend? It's Jenny. She's my best friend. What does she look like? She has shoulder-length brown hair. I just love her lovely smile. How and when did you meet? I first met her when we were in high school. How often do you see this friend? I see her every day. We're in the same class. What's she like? She's not only thoughtful, but also very understanding. She's always by my side to cheer me up whenever I'm in trouble. Do you and her share anything in common? Yes, a lot. We both love shopping and playing sports. What do you and her do together? We usually do homework and read books together. Have you and her ever quarreled? Yes, but we seldom quarrel. When we do argue, afterwards we seem to understand more about each other. Does she know how to cook? Yes, but she's not a great cook. Do your parents like her? Yes, a lot. They always ask Jenny to come over for dinner. Why is a friend important in life? A good friend can make your life better in many ways. I don't think anyone can stand loneliness. What is your favorite hotel? Where is it located? It's the Sheraton, a five-star hotel located in Saigon, Vietnam. How do you know that hotel? Before coming to Vietnam for traveling, I searched on the internet. It's one of the best hotels in Vietnam. Why do you choose to stay in that particular hotel? I like the architecture there. And online, all the reviews about the hotel are positive. Is it by the beach? No, Saigon is not a beachside city. Does it attract many tourists? Yes, I guess. When I stayed there, it was completely booked. What type of room did you stay in, and what facilities did you get from the hotel? I stayed in a double bed room. The room is equipped with air conditioner, a flat screen TV, wardrobe, etc. What do you like about that hotel? A gymnasium, swimming pool, and BBQ area are available. I also love the green space surrounding the hotel. Is all the staff friendly and helpful? Yes, definitely. They all are professional. How much does it cost a night? It costs me around $250 a night. Do you recommend that hotel to friends? Yes, if they come to Vietnam. I love everything there. 1. Making breakfast Mary asks her daughter Lily what she wants for breakfast and then makes it for her. Lily, what kind of cereal would you like? What do we have? 
We have Cheerios and Corn Flakes. I'll have Corn Flakes. How would you like your egg? Scrambled as usual? No, I think I'll have a soft-boiled one for a change. Here you are. I hope it's not too hard. It's just right. Pass me the salt shaker, please. Here you are. Have some more toast? No, thanks. I've already had two slices. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I'm full. Lesson 2. Breakfast. Mary is talking to her husband, John, over breakfast. Good morning, dear. Good morning, darling. Did you sleep well? Yes, thanks. I slept like a log. You're just in time for breakfast. Good. What are we having? The usual. I hope you have a good appetite. I always have an appetite like a bear in the morning. Great. Here's your coffee. Be careful. It's piping hot. Thanks. May I have some sugar? It's right in front of you, dear. Oh, of course. How silly of me. Have some toast. The milk is in the refrigerator. Help yourself. Lesson 3. Fast Food John is at the drive-thru of a fast food restaurant ordering takeout. Welcome to Burger Town. What can I get for you today? A burger, please. What would you like on it? What do you mean? Well, would you like ketchup, onions, or mustard? Oh, I see. I'd like everything, please. Something to drink? A Coke, please. Large or small? Large, please. That comes to four twenty-five. Please pull up to the window. Thanks. Lesson four, to go. John is at the counter of a fast food restaurant getting his order to go. Next, please. Let me have a hot dog, please. Anything on it? No, thanks. What would you like to drink? A milkshake, please. What flavor? Strawberry. Anything else? No, nope, that's all. Here to go. To go. Just a minute, please. A moment later. Here you go. Thanks. Lesson 5. Taking a break. After a day of shopping, Mary and her friend Rose are taking a break at a coffee shop. Oh, I can't go any further. Shall we take a break? Good idea. Would you care for a cup of coffee? I would prefer a cup of tea. Okay, there's a little coffee shop down this road. Let's go. Is it far? No, it's quite near, just around this corner. Okay, let's go. I'm very thirsty. In the shop. An Irish coffee for you? Not at this time of the day, just an ordinary one. With sugar and cream? Yes, thank you. Lesson 6. Waiting for a table. John and his wife Mary have to wait for a table at a busy restaurant because they didn't make a reservation. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I'd like a table for two. Do you have a reservation? No, I don't. Would you like a table close to the stage? No, it's too noisy. Could I have that small table by the window? No, I'm sorry, sir. It's been reserved. That's too bad. I'm afraid you'll have to wait a few minutes. We'll have a table available soon. That'll be fine. Several minutes later. Ah, here we are. This way, please. Lesson 7. Ordering. John orders his meal after he takes a minute to decide what he wants. Good evening, sir. Here's your menu. Okay, give me a minute to look it over, please. Take your time. I'll be with you in a moment. A moment later. May I take your order now, sir? Yes, please. I'd like to start with the chicken soup. What would you like for your main course? Filet mignon, please. How would you like that done? Medium rare. 
Anything for dessert? No, I'll order dessert later. Lesson 8 Specialty John can't decide what he wants for dinner, so he asks the waiter for his recommendation. Are you ready to order now, sir? I can't decide. What would you recommend? Do you enjoy seafood? We have the best oysters. No thanks. I'd rather not have seafood. Then may I suggest that you try our roast beef? It's the specialty of the restaurant. I'll take your word for it. Thank you. What else would you like? I'll have a tossed salad, please. What dressing do you want with that? French, please. Anything else? No, I think that's all. I'll get that for you in just a minute. Lesson 9. Waiting to be served. John's order has been lost, so he complains to the waiter. Waiter? Yes, sir. What is it? What happened to my order? I've been waiting for nearly a half an hour. What did you order, sir? Roast beef and a tossed salad. Okay, I'll take care of it right away. Thank you. A moment later. Here you are, sir. This is not what I asked for. It isn't? May I ask again what you ordered, sir? I ordered well done. This is rare. I'm awfully sorry, sir. Your meal will be ready in just a second. Lesson 10. Check, please. After John finishes his meal, he asks the waiter to bring him the check and where the bathroom is. Waiter, check, please. Right away, sir. How much does it come to? Altogether, twenty-five, thirty-eight. Here's thirty. Keep the change. Thank you, sir. Please come again. I will. By the way, could you tell me where the restroom is? Of course. Go down the hall, and the restroom is on the right-hand side at the end. Down the hall on the right, right? That's right, sir. Thank you. Lesson 49. Car Rental. John is talking to an agent at a car rental agency about renting a car. I'd like to rent a car, please. What kind of car would you like, a compact or a sedan? I'd like a compact. Here's our inventory of cars. I like this one, the Toyota Sprinter. All right. How long will you need it? About a week. What's the rate? $26.90 a day with unlimited mileage. Does that include insurance? Yes, it does. May I see your driver's license, please? Sure. I have an international driver's license, and this is my credit card. Good. Now please fill out this form, and you'll be on your way. Lesson 50. Gas Station. John is getting his car filled up at a gas station. What kind of gas do you want? I don't really know. This is a rental car, and it's the first time I've gotten gas for it. We have regular, super, and premium. This is a new car, so I'd recommend the premium. Thanks. Please fill it up. All right, sir. Do you want your windshield cleaned? Yes, thanks. While you're at it, can you check the water, oil, and tires, too? No problem. Do you have a toilet? Yes, sir. Right over there. John comes back from the restroom. Your car's ready. It needed some water, but the tires and oil were all right. Good. How much does it come to? Nine gallons of premium. That's fifteen thirty-two, please. Lesson 51. Parking. John is talking to a police officer about where he can park his car. Excuse me, sir. I'm afraid you can't leave your car here. I just want to pick up a package upstairs. It won't take long. I'm sorry, sir. Parking is not allowed here. Can't I park here for just a second? You can, but your car will be towed immediately, sir. Then can you tell me where I can park? I can't see any parking lots around here. Drive ahead just a couple of blocks. You can park at that corner lot. 
Are you sure I can park there? I'm sure, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for your cooperation, sir. Lesson 52 Taking a Cruise Mary and her husband John are on a cruise. This cruise is so exciting and relaxing all at the same time. I feel like we're honeymooners cruising out here on the Caribbean. Yes. Oh, the Cayman Islands yesterday were heaven. Right. To walk on the same beaches as Christopher Columbus. Wow! Honey, why don't we try that French restaurant on the upper deck tonight? Why not? I'm going to try my luck at the casino right now. And I'm off to get my tropical rain shower. I want to see the stage show Live Legends after dinner. Ooh, I can't wait! Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, Barbra Streisand, Diana Ross! And we'll be docking at the New Orleans port at 9 tomorrow morning. This is one adventure after the other. See you, dear. Take care. Lesson 53. Paying a Bill. John is talking to a shoe store salesperson about buying a pair of shoes. May I see those shoes, please? They're really a good buy. Here you are. They aren't the latest style, are they? No, sir, but that's why they're a bargain. I see. These are top quality shoes. All right, I'll take them. Can I give you a check? I'm sorry, sir. We do not accept personal checks. A credit card? Yes. Okay, then charge it to my card, please. All right, sir. Lesson 54. Warranty. Mary is at a store returning her purchase because it is defective. Hello, ma'am. What can I do for you? Could I have a refund on this? Is anything wrong with it? Yes, this part is defective. I didn't notice it when I bought it. Oh, I'm sorry about that. May I see your sales slip, please? Yes, here it is. The salesperson looks at the sales slip. I'm sorry, ma'am. Your refund period expired ten days ago. Uh, what difference does ten days make? Well, even though you can't get a refund on it, I can let you exchange it for another one or anything else. Uh, do you have exactly the same kind, the same color, style, and size? Let me see. Hmm. This one is the same style and size, but just the color is different. Oh, it looks like I have no choice. Can you order one in this same color? I can sure try. Hold on just a minute. Lesson 55. Wrong number. Mary is calling David, her friend, but she has the wrong number. Hello? Hello? I'd like to speak to David. I'm sorry, but there's no one here by that name. Isn't this the Smiths? Yes, this is the Smiths. What number are you calling? I was calling 555-2893. Maybe my finger slipped and I touched the wrong number. No, you called the right number. This is 555-2893. Really? But there's no one named David here. Oh, sorry to have bothered you. I'll check the number again. That's all right. Bye-bye. Lesson 56. Talking on the phone. Mary is calling her friend Rose to chat. May I speak to Rose? Speaking. Oh, hello, Rose. Who's this? This is Mary. Oh, Mary. How are you? Fine, thank you. How have you been? Terrible. What's wrong? I've got a bad cold. I need to stay indoors. I'm so sorry to hear that, Rose. Have a good rest, and I hope you feel better soon. Lesson 57. Leaving a message. Nancy is calling her friend Lily, but she is out of town. So Lily's mom, Mary, offers to take a message. Hello, 
May I speak to Lily Smith, please? Lily is out of town till Friday. Oh, that's too bad. May I ask who's calling, please? This is Nancy Wilson. Is there another number where I can reach her? I'm sorry, Nancy. She's on a trip and there's no way to contact her. I really have to talk to her, Mrs. Smith. Can I take a message? She might call here this evening. Yes, please tell her to call me right away. It's urgent. Your number, please? She knows my number. All right, Nancy. I'll let her know. Lesson 35. Check in. John is checking into a hotel. Good evening, sir. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to check in. Do you have a reservation, sir? Yes, I have a reservation for three nights. Your name, please. John Smith. Just a moment, please. Oh, yes. A double room. Is that right? Yes, I'm with my wife. Would you please fill out this registration slip? No problem. John finishes filling out the form. Here's your room key. Thank you. Could we have someone help us with our bags, please? Certainly. I'll ring for someone to help you. Have a pleasant stay. Lesson 36. Wake-up call. John is calling room service for a wake-up call. Room service, how may I help you? Good evening. This is room 123. I'm John Smith. Yes, sir. I wonder if you could do me a favor. I'll be happy to if I can, Mr. Smith. Can you please give me a wake-up call at 6 tomorrow morning? I certainly can. Thank you. Do you provide breakfast that early? Yes, sir. You can have your breakfast either in your room or at the breakfast buffet. Good. Another thing. I need an extra blanket for the night. That's no problem, Mr. Smith. I'll send one up right away. Lesson 37. Room service. John is calling room service to get his shirts laundered and suit pressed. Room service. What can I do for you? I have some shirts that need to be laundered, and I'd like my suit pressed. Your room number, please. I'm John Smith in room 123. All right, Mr. Smith. There is a laundry form and a bag in your room. Please fill out the form and then place it and the bag with your clothes in the closet. The maid will come and pick it all up. Hold on. I can't see the laundry form. Where is it? It's in the drawer of the table beside your bed. Ah, oh, yes, I've got it. How long will it take to get my things back? The laundry will be returned to your room tomorrow before noon. All right. I've got it all ready here. We'll pick it up right away, sir. Lesson 38. Asking for help. John has locked himself out of his room and goes to the front desk for help. Excuse me, can you help me, please? Yes, sir. I left my key in my room. I've locked myself out. I see. What should I do? You'll need to go down to the front desk and ask for a duplicate key. Don't worry. At the front desk. I've locked myself out. Could I have a duplicate key? Of course, sir. What's your room number? 123. Here you are, sir. By the way, is there any mail for me? Yes, there is a letter here from New York. Lesson 39. Check out. John is checking out of a hotel. Desk clerk, good morning. Good morning. This is John Smith in room 123. I'm getting ready to leave. Would you send a bellhop for my bags, please? Yes, sir. Right away. At the front desk. Can I help you, sir? Yes, I'm checking out. Can I have your key and room number, please? Room 123. Here's my key. Here's your bill, sir. Could you please check it? It looks all right. 
Do you accept traveler's checks? Most certainly, sir. Here you are. Lesson 40. Confirming Airline Reservations. John is calling to confirm his reservation for his flight to Paris. Hello, Eastwood Airlines. How can I help you? Hello, I wish to confirm our reservation. Okay, may I have your name, please? John Smith. I beg your pardon, sir? John Smith. Ah, which flight are you booked on? We have reservations for flight number 109 leaving tomorrow morning at 9.15 for Paris. How many are there in your party, please? Two, my wife and I. Hold on a second, please. The operator checks the reservation. Right, sir. You are booked and confirmed on flight 109 to Paris tomorrow. Lesson 41. Flight Check-In. John is at the airport check-in counter checking in. Is this where I check in for flight number 109? Yes, this is it. Would you like to check in now? Yes, of course. Here are our tickets and passports. Do you have a seating preference? Near a window, please. Would you like the smoking or non-smoking section? We don't smoke. Do you have any luggage that you'd like to check at this time? Just two, please. Right here. Any carry-on luggage? Yes, this bag. All right. Here are your boarding passes. Have a pleasant flight.